Thanks very much. And Richard, thank you in particular for allowing me to make these announcements that you discussed with me before. Um, could we have the first slide? As you know, Richard created the TED conference over 25 years ago and um, sold that, moved on, created this conference, which as you know has been sold out and fantastically successful. Um, there we go, TED Med. Um, so with that under his belt, I'm happy to, uh, that he has permitted me to make, make the announcement that next year, Richard Saul Worman will be tackling the $30 billion wedding and marriage industry with Ted Wed. <laughs> next year in Cincinnati, be there. Um, followed, if that's successful, with a gesture toward the foodies out there. I refer, of course, to Ted Fed, which will be in Indianapolis in 2012. Um, <laughs> There's one other one. Yes, there is. I, I almost forgot about Ted Bed for the betting industry 2013 in Cincinnati. I hope you'll join us there. There's one other one. No, that's all I made. No. Oh. <laughs> There's one other one. Really? It's an all Jewish conference called <laughs> Ted Schmed. <laughs> you wanted to know how you could upstage me? I did it. <laughs> you got it. Um, anyway, in all seriousness, uh, Mark had the great idea for a, t a topic for me today, which is, can the iPhone save your life? And of course, the short answer to that is yes. Um, those of you who hang out online and read Gizmodo already know about this story from last year. This guy was golfing, 120 mile an hour golf ball took him in the heart. His life was saved by the iPhone in his pocket. This is a true story. Um, a little bit of time with uh, Google and maybe Photoshop, and you'll see there are many other examples um, where the iPhone, of course, could save your life. Um, many, many examples. If you look at the inset, you'll see that her... <laughs> so the answer is yes. Thank you very much. <clears throat> No, 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 I'm just kidding. No, no. In all seriousness, I think what Mark was getting at was apps. Um, as you know, the iPhone you know, has its pros and cons. There's no keyboard. You can't change the battery and so on. What really made the thing take off, by the way, the two on the right are fictional. Um, those, those are as yet unreleased products. Um, although, you know what you got to do? You got to go to YouTube and look up iPhone Shuffle. And it's a, a parody of an Apple ad but it looks like the iPod shuffle, the one inch square thing, and it's this guy who goes, the new iPhone shuffle, it only has one button. Press the button, it dials a number at random. <laughs> who the hell is this? And it's so funny, anyway. Um, so the iPhone has its unique technologies, the multi-touch screen and so on, but the thing that really made it take off was the App Store. When they invented this App Store, they let anyone in any country, amateur, professional, create new programs to download wirelessly directly onto this thing. And really, it's given rise to a whole new category of device that I don't see anyone recognizing or naming. I'm going to call it the iThing. But it's these things that are somewhere between a smartphone and a laptop or even on the other end of a laptop because they have all these sensors and features that even laptops don't have. So it's really an entire new category. Um, consider the iPhone, for example. It has, yes, touch screen, speaker, and microphone like a laptop, but it also has a tilt sensor, a proximity sensor. It knows when it's held up against your head, a light sensor, two kinds of Bluetooth, uh, two kinds of wireless, two kinds of camera, GPS, and a compass. Now, the programmers of the world look at this list and they just drool. They're like, oh my god, what we could do with this. And I will get into the medical aspect of this first, but first I want to give you just one example of an app that uses all of these things in crazy new ways that could never be done on a laptop or a computer or even a regular cell phone. It's Ocarina. This Caltech professor wrote this thing November last year, has in 11 months sold one and a half million copies at a dollar each. So those of you who have spare time, um, there's an idea for you. So it turns the iPhone into a musical instrument. And you literally finger it as you would a flute. The ocarina is a South American traditional instrument. So uh, wait, wait. Oh. oh, there we go. The vibrato is tilting. 
like that. Anyway, I'm not very good at it, but oh, thank you. But on YouTube, there are people who learn this stuff. There are 1,500 pieces of sheet music. There are websites on YouTube. There are ocarina quartets. This is Stairway to Heaven, ladies and gentlemen. We need audio. I don't know what to say about this guy. And what is, what is a guy who creates something this, oh, and wait, that's not the mind-blowing thing. The mind-blowing thing is, remember, this musical instrument is also wireless. So at the bottom of the screen is a globe icon. I'll hold it steady. I don't know if you can get that. If you look at the globe, you can actually, oh, if I had freaking AT&T coverage in here. Um, <laughs> Damn it. Um, oh, there we go. OK. It is actually going to show me yellow dots representing other people playing ocarina right now and letting me listen in. So where is this guy? OK, that's someone in America. But let's spin the globe. Here's someone in Spain. Almost as good as I am. Um, spin the globe. This is real time. Ladies and gentlemen, this is an instrument of peace. How can we go to war <laughs> when someone's having just as much trouble with the fingering as we are? <laughs> it's completely amazing. And by the way, what does this guy do for an encore after Ocarina becomes this mega hit? He writes, I am T-Pain. It's an iPhone app that turns the iPhone into an auto-tune device. That's the thing that Cher and those other people use when you sing into it. It rounds off your pitch to snap it to the nearest physical pitch. And this is from the Jimmy Kimmel show. I just have to show you. It's only 15 seconds long. This is oh, T-Pain. What would your health plan do for America? It provides health insurance to people who don't have it. Well, that sounds good, Mr. President. But I uh, tell you what, could sound a whole lot better. What do you think? Basically, we've got 80% agreement. We got 80% agreement. The 47 million Americans who don't have any health insurance at all. No health insurance at all. I'm not the first president to take up this cause, but I am determined to be the last. Determined to be the last. Doctors, Doctors patients, patients, hospitals, hospitals wasting money. Your money. Healthcare. Healthcare. Medicare. Medicare. Pharmaceutical industry. Pharmaceutical industry. Diabetes. Diabetes. Amputation. Amputation. When we're gonna say enough is enough. When enough is enough, is enough. Thank you. God bless you. And may God bless the United States of America. So <laughs> So when you give these programmers the right tools, the imagination takes over and they can do incredible, incredible things. So um, I'm gonna warn you that there are many, many medical apps for the iPhone. There are 90,000 apps in all, and this is one-seventh of the list in the healthcare category, which is the third fastest growing category. So as you know, the TED Talks come in different lengths. I'm glad that I got the 18-hour one, because <laughs> I'm going to cover all of them. No, I'm just kidding. I actually asked my Twitter fans uh, which ones are really great and which ones to showcase. So I'm going to run through just a few of them. There are two categories. There's some for patients and there's some for practitioners. Um, there are thousands and thousands I wouldn't have time for. This, you type in where you're going and what time your usual bedtime is. It tells you how to sleep, wake up, and eat in order not to have jet lag. Um, this is an um, excellent um, personal hearing test. You can do an audiology exam with your earbuds right at home. This is a hearing aid. It actually can amplify and tone process the sound around you from the earbuds microphone and even replay the last 10 seconds. So you don't have to say, how's that again? You can do it yourself. Oh, that's what you said. Um, <laughs> I was reading the Times last week. This is an amazing story about um, a woman who has uh, uh, ALS and she can't speak anymore. So the insurance company provided her with this $8,000 clunky Windows system that lets her click icons in order to put together basic speech uh, utterances. Um, but the insurance company says that you're not allowed, to, you can't get reimbursed for it if you're using that PC for anything else but this function. So they actually go in and disable pieces of Windows 
so that you can't, it's ridiculous. So instead, she found this $190 program called ProLoquo to Go that does exactly the same thing, but she always has it with her. So for autism Down syndrome, um, I'll give you a quick demo. Um, yeah, this is the original size of the prototype iPhone, <laughs> much larger than the result. We need audio. Wait a minute. Uh-oh. Not okay. And you can also save up frequently used utterances so you don't have to build it every time. I need apple juice. So again, personal, compact, super inexpensive. Um, this might seem like a joke. Um, it's period tracker. The woman simply taps the green button um, when her period starts and it actually tracks and predicts when the next one will start. And you can also, it also tells you when you're fertile. You can also record. Um, you guys are laughing, but you should see the reviews of this thing. Um, you also say how you feel when you have your period. <laughs> but that's not the best part. Wireless syncing with Period Tracker Companion for Men. <laughs> Life changing. Um, or as the, first of all, look at the reviews that men have given this one. They love it. And as they tactfully put it, this lets you know what time of the month you want to be a little extra nice to your partner. Um, this one got incredibly high reviews, a free weight loss app called Lose It. You literally record every single thing you eat through the day. It has this massive database of every packaged and non-packaged food, every store. Um, so let's say I'm getting a frozen Stouffer's. I type a couple letters. Here's everything Stouffer's makes. And it knows the calories, the carbs, the cholesterol for every single one of these things. There it is. And let's say I go out for dinner to a fancy place. It's my birthday. Um, yeah, there we go. <clears throat> and have a cheeseburger. I can also record my exercise. So um, for a typical day, my exercise would be, uh, yeah, 10 minutes uh, riding the bike. <laughs> and then it also lets you record today's weight, and it tracks all this, computes all this for you. And yeah, I'm not doing so great. So, but anyway, the point is, it really works. And the reason it works, of course, is because it focuses you all the time on your plan. And it's really fun to input this thing at the bottom. It says, you have 500 calories to go today. You're like, yeah, beating it, you know? And people say it really, really works. Um, I need to go back. OK, so this is eyeglasses. Those of you who have turned 40 know what I'm talking about. Fine print suddenly becomes harder and harder to use. So I've put together a little drama for what? you. What? I can't read that. Here, let's get my eyeglasses here. There we go, yeah. Oh, that's much better. Oh, yeah. It's, it's actually much sharper than that. I couldn't hold the camcorder in the right place. But, and then you can zoom into 4X and 6X, and it really, truly works. It uses the autofocus of the 3GS to magnify the fine prints. Um, there are great, <coughs> great apps for doctors and practitioners as well. Um, this one got great reviews. It's Osiris. Um, it's for medical imaging. It syncs wirelessly with the hospital's imaging server, so you can bring up your patient's different images up and down, brightens or darkens, left and right, adjust the contrast, so you bring out exactly the features you need. <coughs> Two fingers lets you drag it around and adjust the picture. And then at the top, you can measure a tumor or some other feature. Um, or you can click the little ruler at the top and use two fingers to drag in real time, telling you exactly how large that thing is. Um, this next one is <laughs> kind of gross, but totally cool. It's a $10 program called Anatomy Lab. Basically, it's a virtual cadaver on your freaking cell phone. And there's this attractive young man. And you can rotate him like this. Oh, yeah, and anatomically correct. Um, and then two fingers stroke down, scrape away layers. Yes, it's CSI San Diego. <laughs> Zoom in on this guy. And dragging up puts the layers back, which you want to do eventually. And there's also this huge database of individual features of the human body. So if something comes up in conversation, you don't know what body part they're talking about, well, by golly, you just tap your way through to it, and there is that body part. 
which you can then read about. Right there, they have a 360 degree version coming out and a full skeleton version coming out as well. Um, Hippocrates is the one everybody mentioned. Um, every doctor's got this, it's fantastic for, for example, it's like the physician's desk reference, that 1500 page book in an app. So let's say I wanna check a drug interaction. Okay, I'm taking um, acetaminophen and uh, warfarin, let's say. Let's see if those are gonna have a bad interaction. I click view interactions. And bingo, uh-oh, it says to monitor or modify this. Why? Oh, because increased risk of bleeding, probably not good. Um, let's say I find a pill in the drawer. I don't know what it is. Well, it's a diamond. And what color is it? Well, it's blue. This thing is gonna tell me what that pill is. Oh, that's a little embarrassing. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's Viagra and there's all the information about it. And also incredible numbers of medical calculators, body mass index. There are multiple versions of this. If you're a real doctor, you can actually pay to get thousands more reference things all right there in your cell phone. Um, a lot of others I won't have time for. Airstrip is for obstetricians. You heard a reference to some future version of this. This is available right now. It lets the busy obstetrician elsewhere in the hospital or elsewhere in town monitor the baby's heartbeat on the iPhone in real time, if you have an AT&T connection. Um, You've heard a lot about the electronic medical records revolution. Well, one of the payoffs will be the doctor, if, they use, if the doctor uses this particular system, can tune in to the daily schedule, the list of to-do lists, and in com complete charts for any patient right on the phone from wherever they happen to be. This one Apple featured at a press conference recently. It's a glu wireless glucose monitor that sends the information directly to the phone. Um, now, the thing that's really cool, though, is what has yet to occur. Um, remember, these are all the parts of the iPhone that can be combined in ingenious ways. One of the coolest ways ever is a new category you're about to hear a lot about called augmented reality. Now, the phone knows where you are because of GPS. It knows how you're holding the phone, whether you're looking at the ground or looking at the air, and it has it because of the compass and because of the tilt sensor. So if it knows all that and it has an internet connection, you can do absolutely amazing things in this category called augmented reality. Here are a few examples. Um, there we go. This one is called Nearest Tube. It's for the British subway system. Look at the ground. It shows you what tunnels are underneath you what subway systems, it's superimposing real-time data, and if you pick it up like this, it shows you how to get to the entrances to the nearest subway stations in real time. There's a New York City version coming out shortly. This one's called Twitter Round, it's for Twitter fans. It shows you where people are Twittering from as you look around you, in the buildings themselves, and if you tap the icon, it shows you what they're tweet tweeting about. Um, this is a not yet released one called TAT. It uses facial recognition combined with augmented reality to tell you everything about the guy you're looking at. <laughs> Pulls down data from his social network, lets you add him to your address book or ask him out for a date or whatever. So imagine if we took augmented reality plus the ingenuity of all these app writers plus healthcare, this is a mock-up, oh, this, this is a real thing, retina, it's a dollar, it's for colorblind people, and I can tell you, I'm severely red-green colorblind, have been since birth, and um, I always had trouble getting dressed for school, because I would show up wearing blue pants and purple shirt, and people would laugh at me, they looked fine to me. This thing, I'm holding up to my different shirts in a pile, it's telling me by name what color they are. <coughs> you can download this right now. But this is fairly simple, this is just the beginning. What if we went to the next step? This is a fantasy app I made up. Um, <laughs> swine flu augmented reality. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there's no end to the possibilities. So anyway, so the takeaway from all of this is that in this new era, as you've heard, consumers are now taking control of their own medical information in a way that's never been possible before. Um, we're online all the time. The internet is 24 hours. We we'll always have it on the phone. And when you combine that with these incredible sensors and this incredible software that doesn't even exist on the computer, you wind up into a truly new realm of software and healthcare. Um,
Now, I don't mean to be a big ad for the iPhone. Um, obviously, there are you know, Blackberry and Palm Pre and other things coming along, although the iPhone with 50 million of these things sold and iPod touches um, is, and the 90,000 apps in the store is clearly the market leader. Um, and I also don't want to seem like I'm way too enthusiastic about apps, although I kind of am. Um, and in fact, um, I, I used to be a Broadway conductor, so I have this weird habit of writing new lyrics to old melodies. Um, and I wrote a special one just for today. Do you, do you want to hear it, anyone? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> it's, uh, it's the tune of a Britney Spears song, forgive me. Um, yes, it's a 46-year-old man channeling a nubile 19-year-old girl. When does that happen other than, you know, second life? Um, <clears throat> I don't remember how long I spent in iTunes, a lost in the store. Oh baby, it seemed harmless enough, but my problem now is more serious. I refill all my home screens once a week. How pathetic is that? Oh baby, baby, apps, I did it again. I filled up my phone with crap from the store. Oh baby, baby, oops, meant to keep up my guard. But I maxed out my card. I'm not that disciplined. You see, my problem is this. I like stuff that's cheap. No matter how badly it sucks, I wish I had a life. But I gauge my self-worth by how much I review. Lately, I don't go out much. People just aren't my cup of tea. Oh, baby, baby, apps, I did it again. Downloaded iFart for the 17th time. Oh, baby, baby, crap, my bank's on the phone. They foreclosed my home. I'm not that interested. Apps, I do it again till AT&T shuts down my account. Oh, baby, baby, apps, oh my, how they've grown since I jailbreak my phone. I'm not that innocent. Thanks very much.